Dear Lord, be with our guest preacher, Deb, this morning as she guides us in your word. Open our eyes, ears, and heart to the lesson Deb shares with us. And as we go out to the world this week, let us be a shining light to others. Amen. Amen. Steve sent me the uh, suggested scriptures, and I looked through them, and when I read the one in Genesis, I had to go back and read the whole story, <laughs> because it just, it's quite a story. So, who's got a junk drawer? You got a junk drawer? Yeah. You got a oh. junk drawer? A junk room? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got both, believe me. You know, that, that drawer, that room. <laughs> They put things you don't know what to do with. They serve no purpose. They're not needed. You, you, you just, they don't give you pleasure. <laughs> but you don't want to get rid of them yet. You, you're hanging on to them. You just can't part with them. So you put them somewhere. You put them in that junk drawer. You put them in that junk room. Then later, you might pull that drawer open and you look in, maybe at one thing or two things, and... You're just not ready. You're not ready to deal with that stuff yet. So you close the drawer. But it doesn't make you feel good. You don't feel good that all that junk is in there, that it's serving a purpose. It's not helping you. It's not helping anybody. And it's actually kind of depressing. So it may take a few times opening that drawer and closing it till you finally say, that's it. I'm tackling that junk drawer. I'm tackling that junk room. I'm going to clean it out. I'm going to dispose of all that clutter that's not helping me or anyone else. I'm going to put stuff where it belongs. And if I don't need it and it's not doing anything for me or my family, I'm getting rid of it. I'm taking it out of here. It may take a long time to get through the junk drawer or the junk room because there's a lot of things in there. But when you're done, you feel better, you feel lighter, you feel happier, you feel accomplished, and that leaves room. You now have that drawer or that room to put things that bring happiness or things that make you feel good. I look at my heart as my junk drawer. I know that sounds strange, (laughs) but, but I do because What should be in there is things that make me happy. But unfortunately, what goes in there are things that don't make me happy. There's jealousy and anger and hatred. You know, those those things that really don't belong in our hearts, but we all experience, and we have to put it somewhere because we don't know how to deal with it. So we pull it in and we hold it there. And we may pull out one of those hurts and we may look at it and we're not ready to get rid of it. We're not ready to deal with it. So we put it back. And it's taking up that space in there. We need to free that space up. It is not easy. So you need, with prayer, God can help you to get rid of this anger and stuff. Because in order for us to be forgiven for what we do, we need to have space in our heart to accept that forgiveness. And if we don't have space in our hearts because it's filled with our angers, you see where I go here? You need to free up the space so that you're able to be forgiven for what you do. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's not easy. And I, I really have been working hard at this because, I, as Steve said, he's not a perfect person. Boy, am I not. <laughs> so I would I'd pull something out, a grudge. I look at it, and I look at the person, and some were old, old grudges. And they really didn't have the impact on me anymore that they did at the time. They didn't hurt as much. I didn't hurt as much for him. I had grown, and I thought, well, why am I still angry at this person and holding that anger? So I was able to let those go, realizing they did not have that hold on me anymore, and I freed up that space. 
but you pull off something else and boy, that person's still there or that situation's still there and you're not ready. So you put it back. It's a long, long process. Sometimes you pull something out and if you thought about it, you'd realize maybe that person really didn't mean to hurt me the way they did. They were lashing out because of something else and I was the fallout. It still hurt. I was still angry at them. I was still holding it against them. I still didn't want to see them. But I realized they, they didn't mean it. So I was able to forgive them because I thought of what Jesus said as he was on the cross. Forgive them, for they know what, not what they do. So people may hurt you, but they don't know they're doing it, and they don't mean it. So if you can release those hurts, it just makes things so much better and frees up that space in your heart to pull in the good stuff and you feel lighter and you feel happier and you know it just makes things so much better forgiveness is such a, a relieving emotion but it's probably one of the hardest ones we deal with because we're human we're human I can't imagine can't imagine how Joseph forgave his brothers. They tossed him in a pit because they didn't want to kill him because they didn't want his blood on their hands and then they sold him into slavery because they were jealous. They were jealous. Granted, his father probably shouldn't have treated him as the favored son. That's never a good thing to do. But he did. And they were just so jealous. They were willing to sell their little brother into slavery and not think a thing of it. They went home. They, they cooked up this whole story about him being eaten by animals and bloodied his cloak. And it's really quite the story. They could make one movie on that. Oh, wait, they have. <laughs> but he forgave them. He forgave them for what they did. When he looked at the whole situation, he, he realized that it wasn't his fault. He didn't do anything. It was them dealing with an emotion of theirs, and they took it out on him. And then he was able to do something for them and save them. I don't know if I could have done that. I will tell you that uh, I have a person in my life who's been in my life for many years, and this is a person that I, I can't not have in and out of my life. And they have been very nasty to me, always. They have hurt me numerous times and they have been just really not a pleasure to have. But they're part of my, my world, my circle. So they're there. And I will admit I am no saint. <laughs> I retaliated. And they would do something, and I would do something, and they would do something, and I would do something, and it just escalated. And nobody had, it, it didn't prosper anybody, it didn't help anybody, it didn't make me feel good, it didn't that make them feel good. Well, maybe it did, I don't know how they felt. But it didn't make me feel good. And, and that's what I needed to, to worry about, was, was my heart and how I was dealing with this person. So it came to a point that I, I looked at the situation and I said, well, I, I can't do this anymore. This is this really hurts, I don't like it. I, I don't like myself when I'm retaliating against this person, but they're not gonna stop. So I stopped and this person actually needed something. They, there was an illness and they needed something and I offered to help. Now, if people who've been in my life and knew what the situation looked like, they go, what are you, nuts? <laughs> I said, no, no, they need something, and you know, I'm able to do it at this point, so I'm, I'm going to. And I helped them. Then I helped them again. And again. Now, in the meantime, they're still hitting at me. <laughs> they're still hitting at me. But it got to the point where <laughs> I, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt as much when they were hitting on me. I wasn't retaliating. I'd freed up that space. I'd forgiven them because I knew they didn't really mean it. They were jealous. 
they were jealous of what my life was, what I had. They wanted something that I had, and they were just going to be nasty to me because they couldn't have it. This was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. But I will tell you after a while, they said to me, I am so sorry for how I've treated you over the years. You didn't deserve it. I shouldn't have done it. And I'm very sorry. Are we friends? <laughs> can we be in the same room together now? Yes. <laughs> we can even be in the same car. And that's close. <laughs> but I've, I've forgiven them, and I think they've forgiven themselves. So we both freed up space in our heart for something good, and we've gotten rid of that bad stuff. I could have continued lashing out every time they lashed out, and it just wouldn't have, wouldn't have served any purpose. Uh, in Luke, Sue read, it says, do to others as you would have them do to you. It does not say, do to others what they do to you. <laughs> we need to keep that clear. Keep that very clear. Because you'll hear that scripture say, yeah, do to others as you do. No, no, no. <laughs> we we got to look at that in the positive, not in the negative. <laughs> so look at your junk drawer. Look at your junk room. See if you can free up some space in there. It's not an easy job. It's not fast. It's going to take a while. But when you free that space up and you fill it with lightness and happiness and joy, you're going to feel a whole lot better. And you may realize that some of those things that people are saying to you, they don't mean it. They didn't mean to hurt you. They just said it offhandedly. And it will make life a whole lot better. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you today. I thought that was, I'll be honest, I, I had a, like six different ideas, and this one just kept coming back. So, and it actually, it kind of fit with the scripture too. So, shall we all join together in our next hymn, Because He Lives, it's number 364 in your hymnal.
extinguish the candles, to take the light to the door. So when you leave, whether you're following the light that way or the light that way, leave knowing that you're following the light of God. And take that into your daily lives. Our closing prayer of benediction you'll find in the bulletin. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of God be reflected in your words. And the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. <laughs> Have a great week. And don't worry, Steve will be back. <laughs>